This time on Survivor Man, I've decided to bring my longtime friend, Bob Wilson. Bob's not experienced in survival, but he's been hunting and fishing for years, and the reality is that it's much safer to head out for hunting with a partner than it is alone. There will no doubt be as many pros as there are cons when it comes to surviving as two. When summer fades and the cooler temperatures take over, one activity over all the others heats up in a fever of intensity. Hunting. Bear and moose, deer, duck, even caribou hunting puts millions of people smack dab in the middle of remote wilderness every year. And every year, hunters occupy the highest statistic of lost victims. My hunting partner, Bob, and I are heading into a hunting area in a remote region in the Great Lakes Boreal Forest known as Tomogamy. Whew. Okay, Bob. And this is where we'll stay. Without food, no camera crew, and very few supplies. Just the two of us surviving for a week in Northern Ontario. Northern Ontario attracts thousands of hunters every year, and Tomogamy is classic boreal and Great Lakes forest with unmatched beauty. But it's vast and would be a tough place to be lost in. I'm giving Bob a few quick tips on how he can film himself while in the wild. And, uh, yeah, you can see it now, right? Yeah. Three shots. All right. Okay. The camera crew's actually already left, and now Bob is also leaving. He's heading in deep, see if he can find himself a good spot to set up a tree stand. As for me, I'm going to hop on the bike and uh, go in a lot farther down on, a, on an established trail and then hike in from there until I can find a spot uh, where I can set up my own blind. Oh, look at that. That's gonna be my tree stand. A frequent method for hunting is to split up. You stand a better chance of spotting game or maneuvering game into the sights of your partner's rifle. Yet this is also how hunters often get lost. The split up leaves survival gear and food with only one person. Uh, this is it, this is where I'm gonna head in. realized after I got going that I forgot to keep my hunter's orange on. So I've put my vest on the back so that I'm playing this safely. Really, I'm just hiking through the bush, looking for possible animal runs, trails, giveaways that they uh, frequent the area. Look good, actually. I'm gonna put the camera down and just keep hiking. Got cameras to carry anyway. Make my way in so I can find a nice spot where I can sit down, find a runway. It's a good spot. We split our hunting methods between a tree stand and my hunting blind. Both techniques have their advantages and disadvantages, but either way, the idea is to be as concealed as possible, so you don't scare off potential game. Of course, concealment, when it comes to being lost and trying to survive and be seen, works against what you're trying to do. It's gonna be great. This is classic hunting. Bob on his tree stand, me in my blind, much farther away after a long ATV drive and a hike. At first, we hunt separately, with the intention of having me leave my blind the next day and come back on the ATV to Bob to drive game to him. Now we wait. Mm. 
be a little bit of work here. Because the night has fallen, and I still don't really have a place to sleep. I feel sorry for Bob. Oh, I, I don't even know what he has for a rain gear at this point. I never even asked him. My, uh, my little uh, blind here, it's, it's got me out of the rain easily. I mean, it, it leaks all over because it's not meant to be a tent, but uh, at least I'm protected mo from most of the rain. But for Bob, I don't know, man. He's just gotta, just gonna have to sit underneath something uh, and make it through the night. <laughs> well, if he gets hit really hard with the rain and he hasn't got himself protected, he could end up uh, hypothermic. It's gonna be that time. I'm supposed to go and uh, meet Bob. I think I'll uh, head off, get on the bike, and uh, make my way back to him. So the idea here was that I was supposed to make my way back to the bike. Problem. I set waypoints with my GPS for where the bike is. Batteries are dead. Now this is a fantastic GPS and I love using it. The technology will fail you if you don't look after it. And I let this thing stay on all night. So I've got no batteries left. So without a blaze trail into here, finding my way to Bob, could end up being brutal. And it could be dicey whether or not I even make it to him today or not. So I think he's in a general easterly direction. I think that's pretty much where I can find him and that's where I'm gonna head. But foolish mistake, trust on technology too much, it'll let you down. Better to get your own knowledge on how to navigate through thick bush. And here comes the rain. <sighs> People rely far too much on technology. I'll adopt the role of a classic hunter who doesn't feel the need to look around or blaze a proper trail, putting all my trust into technology when all along it can easily fail. I've walked many miles from where I left the quad bike without blazing a single tree, so my assumption is that it'll be easier for me to find Bob through this thick northern bush than to find the bike. I know better, of course, but allowing my GPS batteries to die and finding Bob will force the issue of surviving out here. Something's amiss. The day's wearing on here and I've still got no lunch. I don't hear that quad running. Something's not right. You shouldn't have been this long past her rendezvous time. Well, Bob and I already had a system in line. Three shots. It's actually a pretty well recognized symbol of, of you need help is three shots. So I'm gonna fire three shots and with any luck at all, I'm close enough, I'll hear his answer. Respond. I'm gonna respond here. He goes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hopefully you heard that. Awesome. I'm just over a hill here, so he's got to be. He's got to be just that way. All right. <laughs> That's surviving. That is good communication. That's good news. You hear that whistle? Over here. All right, coming, coming. What the heck? Okay, some clearing here. That's when a plan works out. Just like that. I can't see ya. Keep calling, keep talking to me so I can follow you. One, two, three, four. That's the best thing to do. Get them to call out and follow their voice. Hey, I see you, bro. How you doing? Well, that sure worked like a charm as far as locating you goes. All right, so bottom line now is Bob is gonna come down from the tree stand and uh, and this is it. We either make our stand and survive here or we move on to what we might think is for more fertile grounds, but 
Instead of going home, we're here to survive. After all, this is Survivor Man. Or I guess now in this case, Survivor Man. The rain has obliterated any signs of a trail we made on our long hikes into the hunting areas. Our job now is to push our way through the bush and try to survive in it. I'm sure there will be advantages to having two people in a survival situation, but there will be disadvantages too. The best part, however, will likely be that our energy will be higher due to the camaraderie and the psychological support we can offer each other. The danger will be pushing ourselves too hard due to pride or simple lack of respect for our situation. All right, Bob's, Bob's just getting a good drink of water here. We've got little pockets of water in the sphagnum moss, and there's two ways of doing this. Either you can take the moss itself, squeeze and drink, Mm. and get beautiful fresh water. More like Bob, just bend right down it. Yeah, now you'd think that this water might be stagnant, or even bad, but it's not. It's all fresh rainwater, just been collecting here uh, in this uh, sphagnum moss, nice and clean. That's just good. Oh, it's fresh, beautiful. It's good stuff. So we got plenty of water for tonight then. When it's raining like this, all of the moss and all of the punky woods soak up all that fresh rainwater. Uh, looks like a charm. Uh, fresh water. Poncho, perfect. Good plan, somebody's prepared. Not me, I got nothing on my cuts, this raincoat. <laughs> Good thing Bob brought this tarp along, as this is all we really got for the night. If a moose did go through, I don't know if we'd even hear it because there's been trees falling down all night and the rain hasn't uh, hasn't stopped too much at all. So, have you slept at all? Not a wink. So, <laughs> Tree fell down maybe 20 yards away. You could just hear it tumbling down. It was just ridiculous. So, uh, just gonna finish this out, get through this night, and. Uh, Make our way in the morning. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the geese flying. Okay. That last line wasn't called for. I will finish the scene. When I finish the scene, the scene is over. I like that line. You can hear the geese flying. When I finish the scene, the scene is over. With the day starting off just as the night ended in a torrential downpour, Bob and I have just kept hiking pushing ourselves harder to get somewhere ideal. This is a problem, one that can be serious. If we push ourselves too hard, we'll both be drained and unable to properly hunt or make the shelter we need to keep ourselves from becoming hypothermic. The downside of surviving as two is that you can inadvertently keep each other going too far, too fast, due to the adrenaline boosting camaraderie. Flesh you all right? Yeah, I just got whipped in the face. It's that thing where you walk through the bush nine times out of 10, you're holding the branch for the person. 10th time, you don't do it, you forget. They aren't watching, whack, right in the eyes. Yeah. Not a big deal, well, it's always a big deal. A little different when you're at your cottage, but when you're out trying to survive, it's everything. Through here, Bob. Come on through. All right, well, Bob and I have pretty much been going all day. We put the cameras away and just hiked, hiked, hiked. Now, you can tell from the sunlight above me here that finally the rain stopped, but it poured all night. The wind blew like crazy. The wind was blowing actually pretty wild through most of the day. And uh, hey, set your stuff down here and we'll, we'll get ourselves organized. We're out here without a way of making fire. At least we have no matches, no water, no food. Well, we've got water now. You can see behind me, we've actually finally made it to a lake. I think if we go up here, we can build up a shelter. Maybe I'll get you on fire. You yeah. mind doing that? I'll head in there. So the bottom line is we're not here to hunt. We're here to survive. Use it for making a shelter. We've got with us our hunting knives and a small hatchet meant for cutting bones while dressing game in the field. Any tools at all in a survival situation can offer up an advantage. Surviving with your bare hands is a painful and tedious ordeal. Bob's pretty good in the bush, but surviving is a lot different than recreational hunting. Are you gonna get on that fire, man? I don't have enough energy to bust up much more than that. Bottom line is, Bob and I both blew it. See, you get out in a situation like this with someone else, 
confidence level's a little higher. You're not watching us carefully, and so we just waited way too long to start doing what we're doing right now. We're totally caught, yeah. So what do I end up doing? Same thing as Bob. We end up rushing around way too much, opening ourselves up to injury, and also wasting a lot of energy because we're working too fast. What the heck are you doing? I'm building a fire. Yeah, it's slow and tedious. Get the fire going. You're gonna thank me for this. No, I'm gonna thank you when the fire's burning, not when you make a pretty little log home. A little shell there, shotgun shell. Basic striker here. Beautiful, strong spark. So I got gunpowder from the shell. Let's give it a shot here. we go, there we go, there we go, hey, bingo. I've never seen him do this before, so I didn't know if he could or not. That always feels good when you feel flame. That's great. Yeah, there's something the warmth, comforting about The warmth of a flame, huh? Um, but tomorrow, I mean, we can drink water all we want here, but we need some food, so tomorrow is our chance to really go at it and try and find some food around here. Well, that was a heck of a lot easier getting through the night with two people in a survival situation than it is with one. Normally, I'd feed the fire and then I'd fall asleep. Bob was able to keep the fire going nice and warm, so I was just out and snoring. And then he'd wake me up a couple hours later and I'd keep the fire going and he would, he'd fall asleep and be snoring. So what a phenomenal advantage it is to not be alone in a survival situation. We're not gonna move today. We're gonna stay put, work on seeing if we can catch anything, get some food in our systems before we move on. Keep turning over what's might come up with some bait, you know. If I could come up with some bait, I could try some fishing. What's that? Isn't that a beautiful little bit of bait right there? Hey, eh? salamander. I got lucky with that. I'm gonna see if I can find anything else. Look at that. There we go. Let's go fishing. I'll show you where I keep my hook. And you wouldn't believe how many times I've pulled a hook out of my hat. All right, this is a good deal here. I've been walking along through the bush, just uh, looking for places that I can set some snares, and I found a plant that I was not expecting to find at all. Wild cucumber. Sweet. And there's a small patch of it here. Actually, I didn't even think it grew this far north, but now that I know that it's here, I'll keep my eyes wide open for it. Oh. That's the real deal. Oh man, is that good. Well, I got a choice now. I now have to decide whether or not I want to eat it all myself or take some back to Bob. Now, of course, I'm going to take some back to Bob, but that means that for me, there's only half as much as what I actually see here because I've got to share. And uh, makes you think about things. I've got a couple more plants I can gather here. That'll help. This little guy here. Wintergreen. You chew on it, freshens up the breath, and it's actually uh, has components in it that'll help to get rid of headaches. So I'm going to gather some of this and uh, we can take it back and make some tea. Gather some of this sarsaparilla. The roots, I can peel this woody part off and uh, eat it like pasta. When Bob and I were talking about, you know, what to do here, who should do what, and he said he wanted to go out and do the hunt. And uh, that I would do the snares. And I said, well, why don't you, why don't you do the snares? Uh, he'd never done a snare before. And the fact is, he's been hunting for years and years. But most classic hunters, even if they carry snare wire, have never actually set a snare. And why? And he gave me the, the, you know, the classic answer. Well, I've always had a rifle with a bullet in it. And so uh, it's very true. You, you rely on your rifle or your shotgun. Uh, and uh, you don't end up learning the survival techniques that, what if you run out of bullets? Or what if you lose that gun? Or what if it malfunctions? And uh, so, that's why I'm here setting the snares and Bob is out fishing and hunting. Mm. Well, that's good. <laughs> what have we here? Either bait for fishing or a bit of a meal. Take your pick. I have to put them in a the pocket, I guess. Animals are no different than humans. They don't like to get wet either. 
logs over streams can make great places to set your snares, as more than one species of game animal will cross the log just to stay dry. One big snare and one small snare. The thing I love about snaring is that it works when you're not. Okay. I had to turn this on after I quickly jumped because I just got myself a little snake. It's not much, it's not a big one, but still, it's a meal. Best way to kill him, just whack the head. Okay, pretty much done. There we are. Now, one way to do this works especially well with bigger snakes. I'm all curled up there. Tying himself up in a knot. It's to actually kind of pull the skin back, utilizing the head. There we go. So now, just a matter of take the skin and just peel it right off like this. It's easy enough to clear out the guts. And the guts we can use as excellent fish bait. So I'll get the guts out and give those to Bob right away. Fresh snake meat. The energy within the muscles of the snake keep it moving long after it's dead. Hey, you, Bob? Yeah, yeah, come on in. Over here. It's actually good practice to, uh, to call to somebody before you approach them when you put somebody in a wilderness survival situation. You don't know if they're freaked out. You don't know if they're panicking. And uh, a lot of people have been known to actually shoot at their rescuers because they're just too scared. Well, here, have a seat and we'll heat up some lunch. Time for some snake. Beauty. What do you think? Fabulous. Get the camera on you? Yeah, make sure the camera can see you. Oh, that's a good angle, actually. All right, first bit of food in four days. <laughs> uh, cheers. Bon appetit. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's better nutrients, anyway. This, my friend, is very rare, hard to find. Wild cucumber. Pop one in your mouth. Oh, my goodness. That's Isn't fabulous. That oh, yeah. some wintergreen and blueberry leaves into this uh, cup right now. Might as well get some tea brewing while well, Bob hunts and I try to bolster up the shelter a bit. I fish my whole life. I have given them every opportunity. Salamanders, slug, frog, snake guts, and I can't catch one fish. What's up? All day Bob has tried to catch a fish with no luck at all. Finally, Someone else shares in my frustration of trying to catch fish without full fishing tackle. What was once bait? <laughs> is now dinner. Is now dinner. <laughs> this is that sarsaparilla that I picked earlier. Cook it up just like spaghetti, give you some starches and nutrients. It's actually got a good flavor to it. Yeah, it is good. Well, maybe just wild frog, but it's cooked. Isn't that good? Oh my goodness. That's some actual meat? Oh my goodness, that's so nice. Even a little frog just makes a big difference. Okay, so both Bob and I are kind of, if you can feel it, kind of going low energy here. And there's no question about it, it's just a lack of food. A lot of hiking to get here, setting snares, fishing, hunting, and it wears, it wears you right down. I think the biggest danger at this point, though, is going to be the possibility of hypothermia. It's cooling down. If we get a night of cold rain, that's going to be that's going to be tough. Tomorrow, the local search and rescue will be notified of our situation and will be mobilized into action to see if they can find us in these miles and miles of thick northern bush. So they'll have their jobs cut out for them. This is the other advantage of being two people. One of the things we can do is I can take hip up. Why don't uh, why don't I flank left? You flank right. Yeah. So this way, if Bob planks on one side, I flank on the other. Well, essentially at this point, we are just hunting, but the fact is, even when you're lost, even when you have to survive, we've got to bring, we've got to get something. And uh, we can increase our chances if we maybe spread out. But the reality is, I think we always got to be able to see each other, right? Always keep them in sight. Yeah, so we got to be able to see each other. It's, it's a little bit dangerous when you start splitting up a group in a survival situation. But on the other hand, it could be advantageous if we scare something up and one of us is closer to it than the other. You gotta remember what's at stake here. Fact is, we've got lots of ammunition. We've got 
three forms of hunting weapons. And yet, all we've eaten is a snake and a frog and some greens. And it's been, uh, it's been five days. Our snares yielded nothing for us overnight, but it's not too often you get lucky with a snare in one night. I've done that with snowshoe hair in the winter time. It's a little easier. They concentrate all of their traffic, but it's kind of crazy thinking about just trying to get a squirrel, but we haven't had anything to eat. We haven't had much of anything to eat in five days. We got dinner. <laughs> we got... All right, finally, we got some food. Once again, our camaraderie has served to distract our survival focus, and we're being chased by a dropping sun. Same as always, it's one of those cases where I'm sweating from walking around in the bush. I'm sweating now, man. Yeah, and uh, that's not gonna serve us well. In the middle of the night, we're gonna get cold. So. You sweat, you die. Little break, rain's holding off a bit now. Good fire going. Here we go. Let's give him a wrench. Sweet fern, a little bit of spruce needles, and I'll throw in some wintergreen as well so we get another good nutritional warming tea here before this rain really comes down on us. Like a Bushman stew and squirrel a la carte. Well, the squirrel should be just about done, my friend. There we go. Some squirrel leg. Hey, Robert. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> buddy. This is a lot better than a snake, let me tell you. And a little bigger than a frog. <laughs> oh. Isn't that something? Mm. Well, it's not much, but it's the advantage of having you know, ammunition, the fact that you're out hunting, at least you can very quickly get game that otherwise, if all you have is snares or just your bare hands and trying to make deadfalls, really tough. Everything that we're finished with, we can either keep cooking it up and actually chew on the bones and just get everything out of the bones, the calcium, or put the bones in the hot water, make ourselves a little bit of a stew. Smell the wintergreen. Well, you can too, isn't that something? It's just it's amazing. amazing. Actually, uh, wintergreen stuffed in the squirrel. Yeah, it might be and some... the aroma coming out of that is beautiful. Might be surviving doesn't mean you can't be enjoying your food. This is our celebration, squirrel hunt celebration song. <laughs> Join in. turned cold last night. The, uh, the sky cleared out and uh, we're left with a beautiful blue sky day but as soon as you see those stars come out at night and you're wondering whether or not it's going to be warm or cold, it's going to be cold. See that? Ice. So it got frosty no matter what and it's going to get frosty again tonight. We better take a little better care when we uh, stop for the night unless Search and Rescue finds us. All right, one camera here. Bobble, stay up front. Keep his gun handy. Got my gun strapped on here, but loaded and ready in case we spot something. And uh, as it would be with anybody in this kind of situation, keep moving. Keep going, and hey, you think, oh, there's got to be a way out of here. Gotta be able to find that highway. Gotta, gotta be able to make it to the lake. It's a very dangerous situation, because the more you move, the deeper you get yourself into trouble. Uh, it's getting pretty wet here. There's rock and everything over there. You see all the rock and everything? Uh, let's see if we can cut in there, see if we can I'll cross over. I'll go back over. and just go around, since we want to keep heading in this direction behind us here to get away from the water down there. If while you're walking, 
just keep, you know where the sun is now, face the direction you want to go, think about where the sun hits you, your head, and keep the sun on that spot of your head, so keep going straight. Yeah. At least for an hour or so, and then, you know, you know the sun's moved a bit, and you allow for that. But for now, turn the right direction, keep that sun on that spot, and just keep walking, and we'll stay straight. How he is here. We keep hitting nice little rock ridges, but at the same time, this sphagnum moss, little depressions in between them. Pretty wet and pretty hard walking. Marsh after marsh. While Bob and I look for a lake with a clear opening to set off a signal, the search and rescue has begun. We have two uh, missing hunters. They've been gone for a week. The initial uh, task will be to try to locate the ATV, and for that we'll use a helicopter and just start from here and work the trails out. Launch the boat at the landing over here and just to patrol the shorelines of the lake. And once we find the ATV, we'll get you on ground. Bob and I finally made it across the swamp. What's going to slow down search and rescue and trying to find us if indeed we're walking in the wrong direction, away from them? Number one, well, that's the survivor man. They got a camera crew following them. That's going to slow them down. Number two, this bush is thick, and a search and rescue crew must think of their own safety first. The last thing they want to have happen is to have a couple of rescuers out there with a snapped ankle or slashed open eye or something like that. So they've got to take it steady, but safely. You hear that? Chopper. We got a chopper in the air. Bob and I are both in the thick of it here. Hey, look up. There's just no way that Bob and I can be seen down in this thick bush. I mean, we've been walking and pushing through tiny little rock outcrops mostly. For the most part, it's just thick, thick steves down here. We can hear the chopper. The best thing would be to get a smoke signal going. But we're not prepared for that at all, so I'll just keep moving. Besides, chopper's been all around, but it has not come close to us yet. Hey, eh? no, I'm suggesting, way... yeah, it hasn't come within probably five kilometers of us yet. Yeah, he's way, way over there. That's the trick. In a survival situation like Bob and I are in, you uh, you see tinder, good tinder, you grab it while you go. You don't wait till you get to the spot where you're gonna survive because you could get there and not see Birch Tree for miles. The search and rescue squad is certainly taking this seriously. For them, not finding us by nightfall would be considered a failure. And these guys don't fail. And there's no sighting of either uh, missing people. They're still outstanding. All right, so Bob and I have actually come upon a trail. This trail could take us right out of here, or it could go a long way. It could be a simple hunting trail, miners claim, who knows. And we're hit up right on the middle. We've hit it right in the middle, so which way do we go? You want to try north? I think we try north. We're going to try north at first. Without even realizing it, we're putting even more distance between us and the rescuers. See more flagging up there. These search and rescue men and women are among the best in the world. They have to be to work in some of the thickest forest on the planet. They're highly trained specialists. And whether trying to find a lost hunter, a lost child, or an escaped convict, they take pride in their efforts. Bobby just took a shot. What'd you get? Yeah! <laughs> no way! Let's see you, Bobby. Look at that. That's a male, eh? Isn't that something? Have we got a dinner now? Okay, therein lies the difference. Bob was up front and he was ready. He had the gun ready the whole time. The only reason I don't, for one, is he's in front of me, which is dangerous. You want to be real careful. And the other one is I'm running the camera. And, uh, Grabbed ourselves. Hey, Bob, you bagged another one. Oh, baby. <laughs> another dinner. This is going to be so good on a spit. This is going to make the whole deal right there. Now, let me tell you something. Oh. I've always said the fact that when you go out hunting and you go out fishing, reality is, that's yeah, not a big deal. You get skunked or whatever. But what you've been surviving, we're on six days now without food. 
or at least we've had a snake and a frog and that little squirrel. They don't cut it. This is where like it's that. at. This is amazing. Bob's doing a quick feathering. Why don't we, uh, why don't we keep moving? Keep following this trail. Take, you know, gutter, and uh, we got our meal for tonight. Figure, you want to eat it up quick? And you know, I've got some pretty good energy here. I'm, I'm all right. So, so let's we're good. keep going while I'm keep not going. And we'll have a time when we stop. All right. Yeah. Unless search and rescue finds us first. Yeah, OPS. It's Alexander and Team Four. Uh, we've located the ATV. The ATV becomes the point last scene. And I'm gonna just uh, grid 360 degrees to a couple boxes around it. For the search and rescue team, the first piece of the puzzle has fallen into place now that they've found our ATV. That's a needle in a haystack trying to find us down here. Uh, that chopper's up in the air looking for us. I feel sorry for him because there's no way you can spot us down here in this thick and we cannot find a clearing. It's just thick bush all the way. And as it is, we found a nice little trail here that we're taking. Look at that shelter birch. It's just no, yeah, uh, and that's sweet. The big shelter rock too. We make a shelter here. It's one of the things about making a shelter. You do it in the thick of the bush, you're making a shelter out of bush, you're the most camouflaged you could possibly be and never be spotted. So if we can get ourselves out in the open, hang up our orange hunter vests or even wave them if somebody goes by, get a fire going, the smoke, we're much better off. And that's what Bob and I are attempting to do right now is to get to the open, to get to the big lake, do that while the chopper's still in the air. Not too many hours into the search and rescue efforts, the squad continues to find evidence of our trail, and their confidence and efforts are cranked up a notch. Billy uh, found a piece of uh, crumpled up paper, not too weathered, on the edge of this dry swamp where we're at. This whole search is just like a, a big a crime investigation or a, a, a big puzzle. Ah! Helicopter's gone, so we ever called him off? It's just circling elsewhere, but it's tough going. We've lost our trail now. We had a trail, and we've lost it. Something we didn't realize was that there was a team behind us on foot the entire time. While we were walking fast and pushing hard to find a clearing by a lake, they were trying to catch up to us. So we were effectively putting distance between us, which made the search and rescue turned into something that looked more like a manhunt. Uh, the first one was uh, two uh, searchers on ATVs that located the ATV, and from there, uh, we pulled them back, sent the canine unit in, had the chopper overhead, and between the two of them, they're kind of leapfrogging uh, from one clue to the next. The uh, chopper's been able to pick off some footprints in uh, swampy areas, and then direct the canine into there. And at this point right now, it, uh, it, it seems like our canine unit has a fairly decent track on them. Right, we got, uh, we got two brand new arrows. Bob had dropped a couple of his arrows, and the SAR team had amazingly found them in the middle of the thick bush. He's right over top of us. We're still in the thick of it here. We can't get to a clearing. To flash him or wave an orange flag, because this bush is so thick. We got uh, two spent four tank cartridges. Cartridge here uh, looks to be completely plucked. There's all, all the feathers on the ground, carcass is missing. Bob and I finally come to an opening. Got a lake here. Bob! Lake of some sorts. And, uh, oh man. The chopper. Hopefully he'll come back. He was following us. It's over top. It's right over top of us. Wave, but he can see us in the So Bob, let's uh let's set up a, a spot in the open here. We'll get a fire going. You can cook up the bird, and it'll be a signal, hopefully, for the plane at the same time. OPS K91. Go ahead. Possibly a footprint right there in the moss, a fresh one. Right there, one beside it. We're hurrying. Okay. Make sure we don't burn those other trees. Got smoke going, chopper in the air. I got my orange vest. I'm out in the open, finally. Can't believe we found this spot. If we can keep the fire going, 
just with sticks, razor sticks underneath, some evergreen boughs, but when we throw on that sphagnum moss, it really makes a lot of smoke. There he comes. Here he comes. He's looking the wrong way. Over there. See, you can tell where the chopper's looking because he's angled down towards the area he's trying to spot. And we're here. That smoke's got to go, go up in the air. Sooner or later, they got to see the smoke. Many lost individuals have helplessly watched as rescue planes have flown away without spotting them. So making ourselves as visible as possible is the only thing that we can do. There he is, right on top of us. search and rescue. Unbelievable. How they could find us in this thick, I don't know if they're using heat sensors, I don't know what, but those guys were dogged, man. They just did not stop. And this is about as thick as it gets for forest to be lost in. And all we were trying to do is to get to a clearing. And our timing was right. They could have done this quadrant and gone off and left it for another day. You can just imagine how hard it is to search for someone in a situation like this. They don't know if we're not down in the middle of the forest with a broken leg, immobile, can't get out on our own speed. They circled around, we got people on the ground, and uh, man, that is one tough job to find someone in bush like this. 14 individual search and rescue members were able to find two men hidden amongst the thousands of hectares of trees in the northern forest in only three quarters of a day. It's a story that repeats itself every hunting season. <laughs> Often the greatest issue facing people who love to hunt, fish, and adventure in the wilderness is overconfidence. Many times hunters are found after three days being lost in the woods, and the first thing they'll say to the rescuers is, I'm not lost. The same pride that might have caused them to believe that their compass was wrong, or that they can keep walking through the night to get out, lasts right until the end, and there's no admission that they were indeed lost as one pushes the other to keep on moving, when in fact the best thing to do may be to stop, build a shelter, and spend the night. All that said, the pros of having someone with you to survive a lost ordeal in the wilderness can greatly outweigh the cons. Survival alone is still by far the toughest survival experience to endure.